about that pop that greets the number one UFC middleweight contender. He has emerged through the gauntlet at 185 pounds, and tonight, that elusive crack at UFC goal. Just getting here is an accomplishment because the waters are shark infested. Every single time you walk into the octagon, you are challenged at the highest level. So to get here is one thing. It's another thing to become the champion. He feels like tonight is his night to complete the journey, to finish writing his story and walking away with a championship belt. There is a little bit of friction on this matchup, but most people would argue if any athlete is well equipped to bottle that emotion and realize success on a big stage, it is this number one contender. Those questions give way to answers here and there. So here he is, the killer gorilla, longtime middleweight contender, Jared Cannonier. And how do you assess the career to this point in time? Well, only two guys to beat him in the last five or six years, Robert Whitaker and Israel Adesanya. So most of the fights, like this one tonight, that Jared Cannonier is expected to win, he has held serve and done just that. If there has been any knock on Cannonier, it's that his game just hasn't been quite elite enough when the challenges have been the guys at the top of the division. But Cannoneer is world-class. He has realized success in three different UFC divisions. And even though he's coming up on 40, don't let the age fool you. That's just a number. This guy looks a whole lot better with his shirt off than me. Jared Cannoneer, one of the most beloved fighters in all of MMA, and yet again back on the proving ground tonight. And now our tail of the tape for this middleweight championship fight. Now to get a start of the veteran voice of the octagon, Bruce Buff. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, presenting the challenger, Kyle the Natural Bahal. And now, introducing the champion, fighting out of the red corner, ladies and gentlemen, the reigning, defending UFC middleweight champion, Jared. Herb Dean, our referee Three, for this one, just about Ready. to get underway. Good. All right, so here's Jared Cannonier as we get the early portions of this round underway. Physically, he looks incredible. Looks like he was cut out of a piece of granite, but mentally, you can argue, he actually puts in even more work. He has talked to us a lot about meditation and visualization, visualizing everything from the walk to the finish of this fight. This man holds crystals, and DC, maybe if you're lucky, he'll actually uh, let you borrow one of those visualization crystals. You never know. Overhand right, swing and a miss. Oh, and he gets the single leg takedown. Nice entry on that attempt. Side control now. Really doing a nice job getting these shots home on the ground. Another one. I mean, he cannot miss from the top position. Look at that. Recognize he's about to lose position. All right, north-south position now. We'll see how he chooses to proceed. Well, no surprise there as he lets his opponent stand back up. Kick blocked by Kennedy. Just over three minutes to go. Back and forth we go. Oh, beautifully placed with the hook there. Oh, he's in trouble. Oh. 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 Oh, nice takedown defense. 
Well timed with the short uppercut and the clinch by Cannonier. Oh, he's staying busy here, connecting with a barrage of punches. Lead kick landed there by Cannonier. He's not okay. He's not okay. Beautiful combination. Under two minutes to go in a back and forth first round here. Just misses with the straight right. He gets to the single collar time. Look for him to keep that elbow tight and throw punches with his free hand. Well, block that punch. Oh, King Lando. Both fighters throwing heat now. Gets to the single collar tie. 45 seconds to go here in round one. Right now they shoot. Oh, 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 oh. And now he's hurt. That's one of those shots that if you take one of them, if you in the night down. Oh! oh. Hurt him again. There's that body shot. Final seconds of the round. All right, they set. Oh, he took in team right away. Oh, and there's the horn at the end of the round. So the fighter was really caught in the submission there just as the horn sounded. Safe to say he was saved by the bell there. So back to the stools they go. 60 seconds to recover here. We're going to fight on, ladies and gentlemen. Another round coming up. All right, so there's the horn at the end of the round. Multiple takedowns landed for him over the previous five minutes. And you know what, John? Even more importantly, look at the opponent now. He's afraid to pull the trigger because he's been taken down so many times. Getting taken down is one thing, but getting it, having it happen to you continuously really does make you gun shy. And right now, he's very tentative to let his offense go because of the fear of getting taken down back to the mat again. All right, let's get to round two. Straight punch is true. Oh, big front kick lands flush. And he's bleeding from the mouth now. A cut there on his lip. That doesn't look like fun. Lands a big elbow there. target and both fighters exchange in the pocket circling to his right starting to do some really significant damage to the body here another strike lands there Three minutes to go. Oh, and there's a kick to the body, not having that one blocked by Cannonier. Whiffs on the straight right hand. Well, that calf is starting to show signs of bruising now. And you can tell in the way that he's walking. It's starting to take an effect. Great punch, that is useful. Oh! Nice. Nicely done. So a much different approach from him here in round two. Took him a while to find the range, get in his striking rhythm. He has found it here and as a result has really picked up the pace in round two. Cannoneers really having a hard time putting weight on that leg now. You can see the obvious limp, and a lot of that is due to the leg kicks courtesy of his opponent. Oh, beautiful straight right hand. Dude's in a good flow state, landing punch after punch. Well, this is absolutely the hurt business. It's hard to see which party is more injured, but I think both fighters have been really affected with their strikes. Yeah, both guys have been affected. Both guys have been beat up. It's a very competitive fight. Let's see who has the heart to carry them through these very tough moments.
15 seconds. Right over the top, right to the target. Let's see if his opponent can survive. I cannot believe he is still standing huh. huh. after taking that one. Good round. All right, that's the end of the round. You see the fighter's got a cut on his lip, not necessarily a Robbie Lawler lip opening, if you know what I'm talking about, but certainly something that could be a source of adversity here moving forward. Cut man in there quickly to try to shore it up. All right, let us now take a look back at some of the highlights from that previous round. We'll see if we can isolate the exact strike that caused that cut to his lip. He landed a beautiful shot that cut him on the lip. Now, listen, guys. As long as it ain't like Jarzinho rolled the strike and Alistair over oh. you're fine. Cuts on the lip are okay unless your yeah, lip fine. is hanging off yeah. like we have seen sometimes. Yeah. That is not that, but he's got to protect him. I got Robbie Lawler on line one, by the way. Oh, he yeah. Talk I, mean, I remember Robbie. Lip cuts. Oh, my God. I was thinking about that. I couldn't remember who it was. All right, next round is upon us. Let's see how it plays out. All right, next round is now underway. I thought there was pretty good back and forth action in the previous round. Yes, it wasn't a firefight. It wasn't two guys throwing the kitchen sink at each other. But you did see times where they came together and you saw the skill level of these two fighters. Circling to his right. Great job moving into his opponent and getting to that single cover. Oh, how about the timing and the execution to get the ankle pick? Jab gets the attention of his opponent. Well, he continues to land a high number of strikes here, just like he did in the previous round. This is a world-class display of striking here tonight. All right, single collar timeout. Checks that leg kick. All right, so as a result of one of those leg kicks, he is now limping. He hasn't been rendered a one-legged fighter, but his mobility has absolutely been compromised. Well, you can check it right now. It's easy to see. You can see that this guy has struggled. You can see that he's very, very hurt with these leg kicks. Even checking the kicks now will not help because the damage has been done. And we have passed the midpoint of the fight. Cannoneer getting worked here from the top. You don't want to take too many more of these ground and pound strikes. Oh, he got him hurt bad here. Oh, he's really starting to apply pressure on his opponent here. Different approach here in the last couple rounds. And it's the exact sense of urgency that you want to see from a fighter take the judges out of it. All right, so now we start to see some bruising appearing on the torso and all of that courtesy of the body work of his opponent. Just the, the wherewithal to go to the body and the discipline to stay with that approach. I mean, it's just tremendous. Oh, to the top, and now his opponent in a world of trouble. Beautiful level change, making him think he's going low and to flat over the top. Look at that oh, over here. Great punch. Well, his opponent seemed to be stunned to a significant extent, but was able to recover, and it's almost like he let him off the hook. Kind of let him off the hook. He needed to really put his foot on the gas to try to find that pin. Oh, that's a brutal cut on his nose there. He is bleeding. Oh. That's three rounds. Oh. We're now headed to the championship round. All right, so the round is over, and you see the cut man not wasting any time as the fighter makes his way back to the stool. The cut man will try to shut that cut on the bridge of his nose and prevent it from becoming a factor here moving forward. You ready to fight? Ready. Do we it. have arrived at the fourth round fight schedule for five five-minute rounds. All right, here we go. Fourth round of a possible five. And this is the time where fighters are really tested, right? Dig deep, lean on the heart. We'll see who has the upper hand. You feel pretty good in round number five. Round number four is the one that really does test the fighter. It really does test the metal of the guy inside of the octagon. Great job finding an opening and landing a beautiful punch from the punch.
Straight right hand now just misses. Punches in bunches, and he hasn't really shown any signs of slowing down here tonight. I'm not sure how much more his opponent can take. Oh, how about the accuracy to land right there? His opponent's wobble champ. He's hurt bad. He cannot take another shot like that. Oh, oh. huge left. Good defense. Two minutes have gone by. All right, well, that blow is busting from that cut with each strike landed, and he continues to effectively target that area. We are, we are talking about a guy with a super high fight IQ. So when you give him that, that, that crimson red is nothing more than something that inspires him to continue to fight. Champ starting to see some swelling upstairs now. Please take This might be the biggest shot of this entire fight. He lands a massive hook to put his opponent on wobbly legs. Change of the position. Print the shirts. Ground and pound. Oh, staying busy from top position. He lands another ground strike there. Well, maybe ill-advised to be competing off your back, but he's landing. All right, half guard position here, DC. You have an extra hop in your step when you talk about fighters working out of this half guard. Oh, man. I like half guard as a top fighter. I understand half guard as a bottom fighter. Don't want to be there. It's right. very dangerous. But if you are there, he's really using his physicality to his advantage now. He lifted up the neck and snuck his arm underneath to try to get a choke. Ooh, this could be it. That thing is tight. That arm triangle is deep. Oh, oh. Oh, he gets out. He was able to get his momentum going back towards his opponent and back in the opposite direction to get his hips back and his chest Beautiful, down towards man. the mat. And Beautiful. you just spilled your popcorn all over I the broadcast table. did, John. You know I love popcorn. Uh -huh. All right, I'm being told we've got some replays from the previous round, and it appears as though the cut on the bridge of the nose is getting worse by the minute. It's getting worse by the minute, and he's got an opponent in front of him that wants to target it. He wants to hit him on the nose over and over again. I wonder if every time he gets hit there, the blood goes down into the mouth, making it difficult to breathe. You ready to fight? Ready. Go. Fifth and final round. Straight punch. Oh! oh, I think he's still compromised. We'll see if he can recover here. He's in a world of trouble. Sniff that one out as he blocks the kick. Just out of range with that right hand. All right, seems as though his sole focus is attacking that cut. And man, it's getting bad now. A lot of blood flowing. Yeah, as it should. Oh! Oh! Big knee oh, land. He's doing a really good job of getting on that high cross and just following the action. Inside the closed guard. And he's gonna try to find ways to pass and move to a submission. He passes the half guard. Oh, he's got the ground and pound going now. He does everything so well. And he's so calm. He's so calm in the face of such a big spot. And there it is again. Targeting that swelling. Why would you not? Right? You doled out all this damage. Might as go, might as well go right back to it. Well, especially if your opponent is not gonna move his head. He's still trying to go out on his shield. He's he's so stubborn in trying to prove that he's tough. It's really costing him right now. All right, side control now, DC. You know he's in his element on the ground. A lot of tricks up his sleeve. A lot of tricks. And now he's got the back. Under two minutes to decide this one now. 
This is some exhausting work, man. I mean, it is so tiring to be fighting in this way. So much wrestling, so much grappling, expending all this energy trying to hold the guy down. I mean, it's, it, it, no takedown is not fought. No reversal is not fought. Everything they're doing is fought. His opponent stayed upright. I mean, he's still on his feet, but he's not up by much. All right, so the overhand has certainly been a big weapon for him here tonight. Oh! Gets back to his feet. Shock him down the stretch yeah, they go. Very good, very good. Back to the two guys on the shots. Oh, what a finish to this one as we go the full 25 minutes. Stand and cheer, ladies and gentlemen. We'll ladies see how the judges saw it. After five Here is Bruce Buffett. We go to the judges' scorecards for a decision. The judges score the contest 50 45, 49 46, and 49 46. Declaring the winner by unanimous decision, and still the undisputed USC middleweight champion of the world, Jared the Killer. All right, so off the record, you'd like the champion to get it done tonight, and that is how it played out, and still UFC middleweight champion. Congratulations.